Hey Dota 2 fans, the long-awaited fall update is upon us. Marcy whistles away onto the battlefield. Along with Marcy, a big 7.30e patch also got dropped. But first, Marcy is a melee hero that can be played as a support or a carry, and in this case, everyone is playing Marcy as a carry. Her first spell, Depose, she will grab an ally or an enemy and throw them behind her. The throw will stun and damage the enemy and the surrounding area. Her second spell, Rebound, Marcy will choose a direction and spring towards it, and when it reaches, Marcy will lunge to her final destination. Her third spell, Psychic, is a buff that gives the hero or ally lifesteal and attack damage. Her ultimate, Unleash, allows Marcy to gain fury charges that delivers a rapid sequence of strikes. The last strike will create a damaging pulse around the target that will slow movement and attack speed. Enjoy playing her! Now onto 7.30e. All small camps in the jungle XP bounties has been reduced by 10%. There's a long list of item changes, so make sure you go over them. Here's all the big hero changes. Earthshaker's Scepter will no longer grant cleave to ranged heroes. This nerf is not to Earthshaker, but to Morphling. When he transforms and enchants, he will no longer get cleave. Ember Spirit's Fire Remnant cast point has been increased from 0 to 0 0.1, and his Fire Remnant will not get a reduce in mana cost when he buys the Scepter. Magnus got nerfed. His skill max level range has been reduced from 1200 to 1125. Morphling also got nerfed. His agility gain went from 4.1 down to 3.9. Scepter no longer reduces the cooldown on his ultimate ability. Pudge got a rare buff to his hook. The mana cost for Mi Hook is now 110. Last patch, it was 135. Tanika hit pretty hard on this patch. His tree grab damage has been reduced across all levels. His level 15 talent got a 10% reduction. The previous tooltip was incorrect when it said it was 15%, but, but in reality, it was actually 30%. It is now at 20%. Warlock's Shadow War got a massive range increase at earlier levels. Let's hope he gets picked more often. In team roster news, B8 went through some of the stranger events this past week. Last DPC season, when BA was knocked into the lower bracket and they were in contention of losing out, essentially they were out of the DPC season, but they merged with another Russian team. And when they registered, it wasn't actually under their co-owner Daniel Dendy Ishtin's account. So this week, he actually got kicked from the DPC team. In the BA tweet, they said that it was registered under someone who didn't want to negotiate for the spot. So for BA to qualify into the lower division, they would need to play through the open qualifiers. Speaking of playing, Quincy Cruz suffered another loss. A RIP MSS Anwar recently tweeted he's looking to play position 4 or 3, and hopefully it will be in Europe. Boomy Sport who will be competing in the already ongoing Beyond the Summit Pro Series Season 9, will have legendary player Chai Mushi Yifun coaching them. In the BTS Pro Series Season 9 in Southeast Asia, we're already 3 days in and there's no clear-cut leader just yet. Most teams have split their series. Here's the current standing. It's a 5-way tie for first. It will be exciting if the teams continue to keep splitting the series throughout the tournament because this will be a preview for the upcoming DBC season. Here's Boomy Sports taking out Omega Esports. There's yep. no stopping it. Because they lift the creep wave, John. The kisses did not kill the rage creeps off, but now Hero is going to drop in oh. a nice RP. Where's the skill back? It's not there. Tims, he did not steal the RP away. He's got Shockwave. But without the RP now for Omega, I just don't see how you can defend this. It, it, it feels like they are heavily lacking control and damage. FBZ for a big celebratory Ravager, it looks like, as they jump in again. They found Prince. There's your Ravager out. They've got the stun CTM. He'll get to work. And eventually, the GG call should be incoming as Omega. They are about to get bound to dive. CTM, he'll get into the, the, uh, the Shadow Dance and just go in. Quick shower here for Boom Esports. There you go, GG's called Omega. We talked about it, John. They had a pretty great laning stage. But after the laning stage was over, Boom Esports... Over in North America, it too has already started. But unlike Southeast Asia, this is looking like a runaway for the South American teams. Infamous and Thunder Parade are currently both on top. Here's the current standings from October 30th. Here's the highlight from Infamous against Arkosh Gaming is not working out in terms of the well, they're coming back they have to 
Yep. They need to find the kills. If they get on top of A and Sacred, they need to find those two heroes. Otherwise, it's going to get really bad really quick. This is Scotty as well on TB. This is a big timing. They're going to go for the PA first. That's the first life taken down. Crow, meanwhile, running interference on the back line. That does buy them the time. But Crow does end up sacrificing himself, and he doesn't have a buyback. So he is out of the fight. They do manage to get the meta off here. So the TP is going to try to fight, but there's going to be the roar into the Global Silence, into the Wukong's command. Pale Horse just absolutely destroyed, yep. and that's it. The GG called an infamous. I mean... This was just unbelievable how well they played this one. Lumiere will get a couple of kills at the end there as well. 34 to 5 in terms of the kill count. This was just an absolute slaughter. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.